Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project, NevadaBike.org and BikeWashoe.org. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Bike Life Radio is at a new time, uh, 5.30 every Sunday. We have a series going on right now. It's about streets that are closed to cars. Why? Well, because it's safer for cyclists and pedestrians. So, what's the impact of closing a street to cars? Well, last week we went to a street in Nevada City that's only closed on weekends, and it has no impact on businesses. Today we're talking to a Grass Valley business owner who is on a street that's recently closed permanently to cars, and the impact on her business is very positive and important for the community. Why is this important for Reno? Well, uh, there's been a lot of talk lately and proposals even to close Virginia Street to cars. So let's get to it and hear how such a proposal could improve Reno's community from the perspective of Grass Valley. We're in uh, Grass Valley on Mill Street and uh, people are walking around enjoying themselves, not being run over by cars. And uh, there's a guy playing, uh, is this a mandolin? Yeah, it is. And what's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Daniel. Daniel. All right. Uh, and we're going to record Daniel while he plays uh, on the street here for a little bit. We're talking to Lori um, in... Grass Valley, Grass. and uh, yeah, and where are we? We're at an antique shop, right? Grass Valley Antique Emporium. Ah, and mm-hmm. how long have you been here? 40 years. 40 years? Mm-hmm. That's a long time. It is, especially for the antique business. Yeah. It's a high energy <laughs> business. <laughs> what, um, uh, and so uh, let's start at the beginning then, when uh, the, the road was open to cars, mm-hmm. and then COVID happened, and there's a consideration to close it, right? And so what did you first think when you heard this proposal? I thought about it long and hard, and was really not swayed either way. I kind of had an open mind about it. But as I saw their renditions, they had three or four different to choose from. Um, I really liked the idea after I saw the landscaping they were going to do and the special lighting and the um, customers could come down with their kids and eat out on the street, you know, instead of going inside the restaurants, they had the option to sit outside. So on a nice day, People really love it, so it's really nice. Why not just oppose it right at the beginning and go like, bad idea? Being I'm an antique dealer, I tend to oppose new ideas. I like all the old stuff. (laughs) But this grew on me as I took the time to learn more about it. I just thought, you know, this is a, a good change. I thought, you know, it'll bring people down, they'll stay longer. Um, it seemed like the perfect fit for this project. And as far as the parking, that was always the biggest uh, issue for people. Well, we've always had problems with parking. So they proposed to make some of the, to make more parking places in different areas, maybe not as close as it used to be, you know, where you could park right in front of the business. But they did put a lot of effort into finding other parking places and increasing the parking around the area. And now we're going to open up another one further down Mill Street. So um, I think, though, actually, a lot of our local people are used to having to drive around for a little while to find a parking place. So So we started at the beginning, and that was your initial thought, and then it was put in. What was what happened then was it what was the reaction at that time and were there areas that needed improvement um well i think there was a lot of loud voices that opposed it because of the parking and of course there is um, an issue with disabled people not being able to park right in front of the store that they're targeting so that i i do understand and have sympathy for um But as we sat through many days of construction, that wasn't pleasant. You know, there there was 
We were blocked off. There was a lot of noise. There was a lot of dust. So on top of COVID, now we're finally through COVID, but now we're going to deal with construction delays and stuff. But, you know, I think as people have come down, even some of the ones that were really, really opposed to it are now like, hey, you know what? This is really nice. So, you know, it, I, I, we had the best Christmas season we've ever had. Wow, and amazing. that's saying something for 40 years. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, wow. it was good. So that's stage three, uh, the better than expected or what? Yes, yes absolutely. Right. Yes. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, I was talking to some people over in uh, Nevada City and they were uh, clearly jealous. Oh, it's always been rivalry yeah. between Grass Valley and Nevada <laughs> City, like going way back to forever. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So they've yeah. tried to close a the street there. They have, you know, they do it on the weekend uh, mm-hmm. and it's like a block. Mm-hmm. So it's not nearly as long and not nearly as pretty, but people are happy with it. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah. And our special events are so much better. We don't have to close the street. You know, it's already closed. Sometimes we add Main Street into the closure for Cornish Christmas and some of the bigger events. But those events are now drawing more people. Plus, we're adding a lot more because the street is closed off already. So we have musicians that come down. There's just something going on all the time. And and from a a customer standpoint, I don't really know the antique business, but I would imagine that there's a, a particular customer base that might have driven down here previously to come specifically to peruse. Do you see new and different customers that you may not have seen before now, or is that am I kind of off on that? No, I think there is, definitely, because there was a lot of promotion um, as they got the project finished. There was a lot of promotion on some of the local TV shows, the Sacramento area, Bay Area, so we saw a lot of new people coming up to check it out. I mean, it looks like a little Hallmark movie set. And during the holidays, (laughs) it's stunningly beautiful, and it's, we put up a Christmas tree that was just right I mean you couldn't ask for more of a Hallmark setting it was it was beautiful what about the type of customer for your shop though have you are you seeing an a a change because there's uh, a walking street now a, a different type of customer for you in particular in the antique business or not really not really I think that people just do the whole street you know, I think they go in and out of the shops, and we maybe even get a few that had never shopped antique stores before come in. And there is that—that's a demographic that we've noticed because the young people kind of went away for a while, and they're back now, and they're shopping a little differently than they used than we were used to. Like more collectors, where now the young people—they don't want a lot of stuff. You know, they don't like clutter, but they are starting to come in and appreciate some of the older things, old cameras, you know, just old jewelry. So we're seeing we're seeing that turn around a little bit, and that's exciting. So younger customers uh, had stayed away for, do, would you like to tell me your, what you're noticing? Hi. Here, come on over, come over. <laughs> what was your name again? Christy. Christy, you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, and we're in Grass Valley at Grass Valley Antiques. Or Antique Emporium. Yeah, Grass Valley Antique Emporium. And uh, uh, so what have you noticed? I've noticed a younger demographic in the area because it's, you know, it's young and vibrant and alive out there. And there's, you know, hanging out and people are sitting there drinking their coffee on the street and having a good time. So I think it has brought a younger generation into the downtown area. Where before it was, you know, a lot of the locals were the the elderly people that we see mostly. And now it's younger people that are coming down to enjoy the cafes and yeah, so. Has it changed the culture at all, would you say? I think it's too early to tell for that. I don't know. (laughs) That that I don't know. (laughs) Uh, Or do you see uh, it, it trending in a particular direction? I think there's a lot of um, arts culture that's happening in the downtown area now, but I think that's been in the make for yeah a decade or so that they've been bringing the arts down here more. Um, so you know that started prior to the the roads being closed down, but I think that this did bring a younger generation out. Like we see a lot of teenagers even, yeah. 
Yeah, and so maybe culture is the wrong word, and I'm thinking a sense of community, both C, C words. Mm -hmm. uh, and so would you say that it's changed the sense of community at all? or? I think so, and I sure hope so, because I think people are seeing it as a destination where, you know, we'll meet you down there for lunch, and then you can just hang out for half an hour before or after. You know, so, and people are bringing their dogs down. I mean, there's, you just see it as more of a community coming together, you know, hanging out. And it's cool to see the musicians coming out and then people gather around the musicians. And it's just, it, it is a coming together. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I loved it. Right. That was it's fun. Great. <laughs> oh, you know, one of the things that we do on Bike Life Radio is we share bike stories sometimes if somebody has one. Do you ride a bike or have you ridden uh, one? No, I don't. You, you don't ride a bike? No. Is there a reason why? Um, I used to ride a motorcycle. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah it has two I'm wheels. I was really into the bike, but I was definitely into motorcycles, like motocross type of motorcycles, uh, like dirt riding, wow. dirt bike riding. Yeah, yeah, that was my thing. But I don't want to break a bone anymore or anything, so. Yeah, so I've you should start riding a bike. I, I'd probably <laughs> still manage to hurt myself. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Do you have a bike story, by any chance? I don't ride bikes. Mm -hmm. I used to when I was younger. You did? Do you yeah. have a bike story from when you were younger that you'd uh, like to share? Not really. No? Oh. Um, <laughs> I know there used to be, because I used to ride BMX bikes hey, come when, over. when I was come little. You used to ride uh, yeah. BMX bikes yeah, when I you were Yeah, I had a Mongoose M1 BMX bike. It was the first thing that I ever bought with my own money. Wow. I washed cars for 50 cents a car until, I think that thing was... $176 in 1988 and I was 10 years old and I washed I washed cars I folded laundry I ironed the neighbors clothes I did all kinds of things to come up with the money for that bike and then at the time um, at the Nevada County Fairgrounds they had a BMX bike track and it was really cool it had you know the little little humps and then it had this big tabletop and I wrecked my bike over the tabletop. <laughs> so that was <laughs> that hurt, and that was that was the last time that I went there. But it, it was a really cool um, bike track that they had at the time at the fairgrounds, and I wish they still did because that would be fun for the kids around here. So when you first got it, uh, you finally got all the money together and you went and bought it. I did, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was a very big deal when I finally got all the money. My mom is a she owns this store, the antique store, and she had a um, treadle sewing machine cabinet in the house and where the little spools of thread would go is where I saved all my quarters. So once I finally, I mean, I made this money quarter by quarter um, to put to, to get enough for the bike. And so when I finally got it, we went down to the Nevada City bike shop. What is that called? Tour of Nevada City mm -hmm. bike, bike yeah. shop. It's still there. Um, and purchased my bike. It's very thrilling. Yeah, so then yeah. you got it, and then what'd you do? I rode it all over the place. Like right away? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. I used to, you know, back in the 80s, That's you could ride a long distance, and, you, you know, it wasn't as worrisome as it is today to let kids go play all day long on their bike. So I used to ride from the top of Banner Mountain over to where the, the airport is. Good, probably three-mile ride. As a little one. And so then you're uh, doing this jump onto the tabletop oh, and uh, and you crashed. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to have my mom come pick me up. <laughs> yeah. How old were you? Um, I think I was about 11. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it was shortly after I got the bike that they put the BMX track in at the fairgrounds. Yeah. And, uh, did you go there because uh, there were lots of boys? No, I went there with my older brother. I don't think I liked boys very much at that time. <laughs> I have a 12-year-old that's very uh, likes boys and then doesn't like boys yeah. uh, from hour to hour. Uh, <laughs> don't blame her. <laughs> but uh, she's very interested in boys that ride bikes. Oh, and yeah. yeah, and if she sees one that's riding a bike, she's suddenly very attracted to them. Aww. Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, the So then you crashed and... Your mom picked you up, mm -hmm. and do you remember doing that? Vaguely, I'll be honest. I don't remember all the details, <laughs> but I do remember the crash. Did you ride again after that? I did. My stepfather um, was a fireman, and his fire department was just shortly down the road on on uh, McCourtney, which is actually the fire department was right across the street from the fairgrounds. And so my stepdad, who adored me, got in his 
his uh, fire truck and came and got me and bandaged me all up like I was the big uh-huh. victim. <laughs> Put his, out the fire on the his, bike. Yeah, it was yeah. his hero moment. So, <laughs> yeah, so I got treated like the little princess. But, yeah, I rode again, definitely. The last time I rode, um, it's probably been about five or six years. I had gotten a bike off of craigslist and um i had the very bad idea to take it four miles out on a trail and i didn't make sure all the bolts were tight so as i'm riding the handlebars went forward and i was at the end of the trail so i had to walk the bike back about four miles Uh (laughs) yeah that was not fun and that was the last time that actually was the last time i rode yeah it's been a while why um, because I'm not mechanical and I haven't fixed the bike yet. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Again, I'm glad we, we got that bike story. That was a good one to share. <laughs> and thank you, Christy. Thank I really you. appreciate it. It's nice it. to meet you. I'll send you the, the Spotify when it's on. Oh, that's uh, cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. okay. Yeah, it'll, it might be a show just entirely about this area. It just kind of depends on how many hours or if Uh I I collect enough sound or not. (laughs) Thank you very much. Daniel in Grass Valley. Yeah, thank you so. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks for coming out to play. What do you think of the (laughs) the street, by the way? Well, I love the street. I mean, we've been talking about it for 20 years, but now where are you going to park? So we got to fix the parking problem. So... Uh, did you walk from your house or what? No, I had to drive. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. But then you, what did, what did you do with your car? Well, I found a parking spot, but there's not many. <laughs> <laughs> but you found one, didn't you? I did find one, yeah. yeah so God, know, it, God is good. I was talking to uh, the antique shop, and they said uh, that that was a concern, is the parking. But there has always been a concern about parking. So. There always has. So I don't know, how do we, what did we lose, 20 spots on the street? But... Put a ten-story tower over there. I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah, with a, a thousand spots in it yeah, or whatever, right. right? Yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> it's nice to see the people out, though. It's really nice. We should be like this more often. Do you think that you would be out here playing if it weren't for the street being like this? Uh, it's not as easy. No, it's it's easier to play. I've, I'm like I said, it took me a year to get down here, but but I think it's really great. Yeah, I think it's great. We, we need to be more more human. You know, more human, more seeing our faces. I think it's good. Thanks for coming down and playing. Have a great day. You too now. I appreciate your your work. Daniel, a mandolin player who went to play on a street that is now closed to cars in Grass Valley. Lots of people around to listen to him play. We also spoke to Lori at Grass Valley Antique Emporium. We spoke to her about the challenge of getting the street closed to cars and open to safety for cyclists and pedestrians and how that's good for her business. It's bringing younger customers to her business. This matters to Reno because there's been a lot of talk about closing Virginia Street downtown. Maybe one day it'll happen. Next week, to close out our Nevada City Grass Valley series, we're going to talk to a bike artist in Nevada City. Tune in at 5.30 on Sunday. That's it for Bike Life Radio. We ride our bikes out into the world, and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. We're made possible by NevadaBike.org, BikeWashoe.org, and KWNK in Reno, Nevada, owned and operated by the nonprofit bike shop Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. I'm Kai Plaskon. Ride on. (laughs) 